to Atlanta, where Houston's coming into town. Atlanta favored by a point and a half. The over under on this one, 41 and a half. Thoughts on this one? Um, I'm going to take Houston. I just, I like the way that they're playing right now. Now, Atlanta has been no slouch, right? They're, yes, they're two and two, they're one and three against the spread. Um, but Atlanta, with with their inability to be dynamic in the passing game, it's only a matter of time before teams just absolutely just continue to or, or stack the box and make life extremely difficult. And D'Amico Ryans, being a former defensive player, I think he sees that, right? Like, I think he understands what makes his defense tick. And I think they're going to go man man coverage and they're going to slam safeties in the box and they are going to do everything they can to make Desmond Ritter beat them. And I am not convinced that he is able to do that or that Atlanta can be dynamic enough with their play calling to back Houston off in this game. So I like Houston to cover. I like the over. I think that we're going to see some points here. I, I can see Bijan getting loose for one. Um, and the way that Stroud has been able to find Tank Dell and Nico Collins, I like Houston's ability to put some points up in this game and jump out to an early lead. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I think that we do see the over on this one here. Like 41 and a half seems really low, especially since we've seen the Houston Texans like just come out and play extremely well on the offensive side of the ball and put points up. Uh, so I, I do like the fact that we, we could see Houston, you know, I could see Houston hanging a 30 burger here in this one and, and getting close to covering that all by their lonesome. Uh, but that being said, so I, I just, just said the over, I'm also taking Houston in this thing as well. I think that um, for all the points that you just made, I think that they come out here and they, they take care of some business on this, this guy and Houston could be sitting three and two, um, you know, very early in the season and something that a lot of people weren't expecting. A lot of people were, were kind of already writing off this Houston Texan team coming into the season that they'd be competing for another top five draft pick. Um, and they are looking like they're coming out and competing for anything but. And uh, so I think they'll do very well here. Nico Collins, uh, you mentioned him a little bit ago. I do like his prop. He's got a receiving prop of 55 and a half receiving yards. I'm going to take the over on that wow. one. I like it. And I like this for a couple reasons. Number one, we told you on this show, CJ Stroud was a better quarterback. All like, the way back in March. Yeah. We were, we were hammering that for the, from the beginning. Um, so I like the fact that he's doing well. I like, I like being right. Imagine that who doesn't like being right, but I'm going to gloat about it here for a second. We were right. Um, now, Desmond Ritter, I'm taking his under, under 179 and a half passing. Again, I just don't feel like they're dynamic enough. I feel like, you know, you, you're you locking down um, you're locking down Drake London. Kyle Pitts is forgotten. I mean, Jonu Smith is basically the receiving tight end in this offense. WTF. Right. Like big, bold exclamation points, WTF. Johnny Smith, a fine receiving tight end in his own right. We saw him do many great things with Tennessee before he went to the barren wasteland of New England and is kind of kind of reemerging. But you have Kyle Stinkin Pitts. Like enough said. So Ritter under 179 and a half. Yeah. And it's funny, right? Like I'll pull back the curtain here a little bit because you and I were talking before we went on the show tonight and in the home league, I've got uh, Deshaun Watson on by also, you know, was dealing with the injury. So even if he wasn't on by like that's a question mark in itself on what I would have done but regardless he was on by so that leaves it to the point of a super flex deal and I was asking I'm like I just don't know I don't know that I can take uh, that I can play Desmond Ritter here and feel confident about that um, and I didn't play him last week in the uh, in the matchup with Deshaun Watson being out as well and pivoted last week to a wide receiver to put in super flex I'm gonna do that again that's that's my confidence level in, in Desmond Ritter right now so uh, yeah I'm not even willing to play Desmond Ritter as a QB two in my super flex. I'll I'll put another wide receiver in there. So yeah, I think that's the right call right now. It's just that's just not like I am if you are QB starved, right? Super flex leagues, right? If you're in a 12 team super flex league and a lot of teams are keeping three, if you are starving for help at quarterback, go ahead and slide a slide a waiver claim in for Taylor Heineke. Like it may not come to fruition, but at the same point. I'm, I would not be surprised if we see him start a couple games for Atlanta. And if he does, 
he's enough of a gunslinger. I think he would at least serve well for fantasy purposes. Atlanta may not get the results they want, but for fantasy purposes, I think Heineken can be relevant enough throwing the ball in that offense that um, you might see some resurgence out of uh, Kyle Pitts and Drake London. 